Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go through the different warm up or preparation movements that come into the white shell yoga classes. And I'm making this video specifically because when we go through the white shell yoga sessions, I don't always have the time to really tease apart and really go into the details of the warm up exercises. And they're really important. So I wanted to do this video so that we can go in and deeply explore the techniques and the reasons and the approaches that we can bring to these exercises. All of the warm-ups are, they have specific purposes. They're not just, um, I don't know, they're not just like any old movements, but they, they actually have a very specific purpose. So much so that I believe you could do these warm-ups exercises as a, as a standalone practice. You could also do them as movements that you do before you do other shamanic work like uh, divinations, journeys, cleansings, um, walks in nature. You could do these warm-ups uh, as a daily practice to keep your body open as an open channel. The reason why we do them uh, before the Kriyas is that we're getting our body open. We're getting the channels open so that when we go into the Kriyas, we are like, um, we're more receptive and we're more, uh, uh, I want to say like communicative with the energetics of the Kriya itself, which would have a unique uh, frequency signature, depending on the Kriya. Okay, so let's get started with these movements and I'll break them down for you uh, here, okay? So the first one is Cat-Cow. And cat-cow, this kind of movement shows up in yoga, it comes, shows up in physical therapy, it shows up in Pilates. You're going to see this kind of movement, uh, and you've probably experienced it if you've done any of those. Uh, but the way that we do it is very unique, and I'm going to explain a lot of the different parts of this. It's such a good warm-up because almost anybody can do this. And, um, and it covers a lot of different pieces. So first of all, you're on your hands and knees and you can weight transfer on your arms and your hands and your knees, right? So I'm going to my right hand and my right knee, my left hand and my left knee, and I can do diagonals and circles and all different kinds of shapes. The, go ahead and you bend your elbows so that they're buoyant. Feel how your, your arms are like, you know, you really want to think like, you know, this is cat cow. So think like a quadruped that you could really bend and move your elbows and arms. So this is not in any way, I would say you pretty much never lock out your joints unless we have a specific energetic purpose to do so, and one is not popping into my mind right now. So go ahead and um, have a buoyancy to your elbows. This warms up your wrists, your hands, your shoulders, your arm muscles, okay? So right away, that's getting warmed up. Now, your pelvis, you can wag your tail here, you know, like you have a big long tail. And you can also, when we move into this flexion, into the, the cat back, your pelvis has closed. So your sitting bones and your tailbone are down and together. 
And so the pelvis has closed. And then when you extend your spine, your pelvis is open. So your sit bones are wider. So please experience that. Sit bones closing. And sit bones opening. The arms straighten a little bit more when you flex, like the Halloween cat. And your elbows bend a little bit more when you extend. So we're getting this movement through our spine. Now, this is not, the spine is like a chain, right? The, the vertebra are like chains. So you can kind of go side to side. You can obviously flex and extend, but there's nothing, um, this is very fluid, this movement, okay? And it's asymmetric. So each repetition will be different. You can exhale nicely with the flexion. And you can inhale with the extension. You can go faster. And inhaling. And exhaling. And inhaling. So you can go faster. But notice when you go faster, you don't become more rigid all of a sudden. In, out, in, out. There's none of this abrasive locking your, your body, but instead it can flow fast and inhale and exhale and inhale. Yeah. So really fluid. And you might imagine like a, a, um, a cat or a horse that the body moves in this rippling fluid manner. Okay, so I think that's enough detail for the cat-cow. And um, again, the reason why it's right at the beginning is because the scapula are moving, the spine, the rib cage, the breath, the pelvis is opening and closing. There's weight coming into your arms and you're starting already to... Um, Free up your spine, not stretch your spine or, you know, make your body be something different than it is, but you are actually opening up the fluid nature of your body. So we're already starting uh, to care for ourselves, to bring compassion and connection into our bodies. So then we fold. So you open your knees a little wider. I'll show you from the, this angle. And so instead, you don't want to fold over with your knees really close together. Ugh. You'll just try it actually. Bring your knees close together and fold over. Ugh. You, you don't fold that way. Um, so go ahead and open your knees a bit. That brings your um, femurs in more of a angle that is how you're made into your hip joints because your your hip joints are actually on diagonals they're not straightforward like headlights in a um, in a car they're they're more on an angle so you're going to open your knees and you'll find that you're more foldable in this this way okay now of course uh, this is requiring a lot of flexibility in the knee joints. So if you're practicing with me and you need some assistance on your knee joints or on your ankle joints, it's good to have a pillow or a cushion or a folded up towel nearby. And what I would do if I, I needed this, I would just throw it in between the knee uh, femur in the shins, I would throw it in there so that gives a little more space uh, for the knee. If it's your ankles that need help, I would let, I would be on the pillow or the cushion so that the ankle joint can open. Um, instead of being so flat, it can open. And now your ankles aren't being so compressed. 
as you fold over into the child's pose. Okay. Now, why do we do this one? There's a few reasons, but one of my favorite reasons is that when you're curled in and you're down there, your head is on the earth, and you can do this if you'd like to right now while I'm speaking, but your cranium, the, the, the frontal lobe, the frontal bone, is open to the ground. If your head can't get to the ground, I recommend that you put a cushion under your forehead so that your, your uh, frontal bone can open, open to the earth. You're curled in. It's dark. Your eyes are closed. And in this place, you make a, it's like a secret. It's not a secret, but it's a personal connection with the earth. Say hello, hello to the earth. And let any of your thoughts, your, your mental chatter, you know, the stuff that can clog our, our minds, let that open and just flush it out. Become, let your frontal lobe open and become vast like the earth herself, okay? Mother Earth will open for you as your head rests upon the earth. And it's also that deep connection to the earth. It's your connection, not mine, not your neighbor's, yours. Okay. And you're coming up through your spine to come to sitting. Now, in sitting, we often go to life nerve stretch next. And I'd like to break this down for you. Life nerve stretch, uh, the life nerve is from, you got to think of it not as a nerve that's typically thought of in the body, but as a chain of nerves. And I also think of it as a chain of fascia, a chain of connective tissue. So we have the nerve chain is the brain through the spinal cord, through the sciatic nerve roots, the major nerves that come out uh, in the sacral area, and down the back of the legs, down the calves, and to the bottom of the feet. And you could even think uh, fascially as this connecting from the eyes to the forehead, to the back of the head, down the back of your spine, down the back of your legs, into your feet. Okay, so we're, we're using this movement and it's movement. So stretch, okay, stretch. Stretch is not, um, stretch is stretching. Just like balance is balancing, okay? So it's called life nerve stretch, but I might call it, if we were really to be accurate, we call it life nerve stretching, moving. So what we do in white shell yoga and what is most beneficial for your body is to invite your body to open. Many people don't invite their bodies to open when it comes to, to doing a stretch. You know, just think about it. Stretch. Don't you just see someone, I, I, my typical one is I see a, um, someone going, oh, like just pushing against some resistance. Oh, and I think that's stretch in the body. But um, there's gonna be none of that here. You won't, you won't find it. So we're gonna do opening, invitation, because the body has to know it's safe to open. The body will open, it will stretch, it will lengthen, it, it will move smoothly, but you want to ask it to open and to release and to reveal. And this is an invitation. It's not a demand. 
So we do this exercise early in the, uh, in the warm-ups here because this is a powerful channel. Imagine a channel that goes from your foot. And think of yourself standing from your foot, the bottom of your foot to your crown, your foot on the earth to your crown to the cosmos. So this is such an important uh, movement. Okay, let's look at it. So you sit with one leg out. I'll sit facing forward. One leg out and one leg tucked in. Okay, and your foot is pulled back. So that is a bit of a pull for you. You'll have to engage the muscles on the front of your shin to flex or dorsiflex this ankle back. So that is a little bit of an effort there. Okay, that pulls on that end of the, the nerve chain. And then of course the other end is here. So, and your leg is tucked in. Now, for, men, for most people, if to sit like this, you're already kind of tucked in under because there's not enough length right now uh, at the bottom of your, the back of your legs and maybe other parts along, maybe your spine, to get right up as high as you can. So for that, again, your trusty cushion or towel nearby, you can tuck that under your pelvis to help you to get higher up on your sitting bones, okay? A note on using props here. Using props is a good thing. <laughs> It's a good thing. It's not cheating. It's not like you're lesser or you're better if you don't need them. Remember, we want to facilitate an opening of our energetic channels. That's what we're here to do. Facilitate an opening of our energetic channels. Not to struggle into some better or worst or I'm cheating or I'm using a cushion or <laughs> I'm kind of sorry I have to say these things, but it's true they exist uh, when you work with people in movement. Okay, so you grab your cushion if you need it, and a lot of people will need it. So I'm going to use it here. And you want to sit as high as you can and feel those sitting bones underneath you. The first thing you do in life, in, in this version of a life nerve stretch, is you hinge forward, you hinge forward with the straight spine. Now you probably, and so that means your tailbone is going back and your head is going forward and your spine is straight. Now, I would say that I've got pretty good flexibility in my hamstrings and the, my life nerve is fairly flexible. But even saying that, you only often can hinge a little bit with a straight spine before if you keep going forward, you'll start to bend in your back. Okay, that's okay. That's just how it is. So you only have a little bit of hinge. So you just hinge first. Then your spine starts to flex. So we flex it and you hinge, then you flex your spine, then your chest comes down, then your neck and your head. Then you can roll back up. Okay, so let's remember, please remember this. You hinge, then the spine flexes or rounds, rolls down, head is last, then you roll back up. Okay, so I'm going to face the front. I'll keep my cushion. It's kind of nice today. That's another thing. Some days, because what you've been doing or not doing, you might feel more or less flexible. So it's always good to have the cushions, the towels, things around that you can assist yourself with. Okay, here we go. So also my leg is not straight on because again, we don't fold very well that way. So my leg's just a little off of the straight line. Okay, so hinging 
rolling your head is last now the arms are coming to the ground and that's because I've got it's only a little bit but I've got a little bit of support there so if I didn't have my arms and it was just on my back my back muscles would have to do extra work then is really needed to open channels remember the goal is to open the channel so and and Okay, so the arms are going to be assisting. So my arms are always kind of, they just land, hinge, spinal rolls, arms land, head is last, you roll back up, hinging and down. Now your head is last, so what's happening is your spine is becoming a whip. Your spine's becoming this wave-like action. So if I was to mock it up, and I, I recommend you join me with the mocking. So here you are, you're up, you go down and then down and up. It's like a big feather, like a big feather duster, yeah? But really, it's more like a wa whale, like a wave, like a whale or a dolphin like that okay so that's your spine and hinging and rolling head is last and roll up now as you're doing this movement your body doesn't have to always go on the same um, rail you can go off the rails <laughs> you can go in more a little more towards the middle you can go a little, rotate a little more towards the other side. So there's a little rotation that can come in, turning slightly your head one direction or the other, or forward. You can bring your arms into it. Sometimes I do that. So the arms are part of this. And down. And what you're looking to do is to smooth it out. So any rough edges, any like oh, little clunky parts, take it back a bit. So if I was going, if I was like uh, pushing my flexibility way over here um, and not smoothing it out, my system, the whole system, will go, er, will tighten. But if I back out, so I always say back out of your full range. So if my full range was here, I'm going to actually practice this exercise a few, maybe half, half an inch, maybe a few millimeters, but just a little bit back of full range. Why? Because when I go a little bit back of my full range today, my body can move easily and I can work on the smoothing out. And when you work smoothly and easily, your body doesn't go into a protection mode. It goes into a revealing mode. It goes into the mode of showing you what is here. Okay. Um, I think we're going to switch sides, but I've got to add in the teaching of the um, a breath pattern. Before we switch sides, though, just cross your legs and sit for a moment. And notice you're sitting. You can close your eyes to help you come more into your body with your awareness. So if you've stayed on one side, like I have, you probably notice, whoa, a difference between the side you did and the side you haven't done yet. What is that difference to you? Voice it to yourself or acknowledge it. For me, it's kind of like uh, the right side, which I just did, feels like a three-dimensional colored in uh, model or clay or it just has a fullness maybe a photograph but it's got a lot of dimension to it and it's colored in 
while the other side feels a little bit more um, less full, more stick-like or more tighter, the side I did feels open and my pelvis feels really present, like connected to the ground and I feel more upright where the other side feels a little bit, again, clunky, struggling a little to sit upright compared to the other side. Anyway, that's my sharing. For you, you'll feel what you feel. But it is, most people feel a significance of some sort. If you are, if you don't feel that much, if I say, do you feel this? Or what are you sensing now? And you think, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing because you're not alone and it's okay. Um, we're not always asked in our lives uh, to notice subtlety. And our human system is designed to notice subtlety and notice worlds upon worlds. It's a, it's a skill we have. So sometimes going through these movements and just asking the questions gives you permission to open up a realm that perhaps you hadn't been invited to. And the beautiful thing is, it's a realm of you. Okay, let's go to the other side. All right, so again, I'm checking, what am I doing? I'm checking to see if my, I'm at pretty high up on my pelvis, on my sit bones. And you know, you can always do this by taking your glute tissue, your bum, and kind of lifting it up and, and back, and then it helps you come onto the sit bones more. You can also lift up, push down, and kind of wiggle your pelvis. The cushion helps, and you might feel like you need a thicker cushion. This is your exploration for you to do, so you might want to do that. All right, so the one leg's in, I'm pulling back on my foot. Remember we hinge and, oh, that's as far. It happens to me today, I can feel my left leg is tighter. It often is actually, a little tighter than my right. So when I hinge, it's like, oop, that's the end range. Not a problem. It starts you to do the rounding, rounding down and uncurling, head is last, coming out. Hinging, rounding down. Remember the arms are helping. They don't help a lot, but that little bit that they help actually is a lot. So go ahead and play with your range. Remember that. And the goal is not to go further down your leg. The goal is to make it smooth. And one of the ways of making it smooth is not going to full range, actually backing up a little bit from your full range smoothing it out. Okay, now I didn't talk about breath on the last side, so I want to talk about it here. Notice that when you inhale, it, when you inhale, right, the air fills your lungs, okay? Lots of things happen when you inhale, but one of the things is the air fills your lungs and it goes with the extension phase of your spine. So we can exaggerate that so that you're really full of inhale at the top of this. And then you hinge forward. My breath is held. I start to flex. And then when your body reaches the diaphragm and the chest and the neck and the head, the air naturally comes out. Your head is down. The air is out as you roll back up. And then once you reach halfway up, the air comes back in. Up, hinge, 
Roll, exhale, out, head down. Curl back up. Inhale when you're halfway up. All the way up. Hinging, rolling, exhaling. Uncurling, unrolling, inhaling. Hinging, rolling, exhaling. Head down, uncurling, unrolling, inhaling. Okay, so you'll note, so that means your breath, the timing of your breath and the timing of your flexion, uh, your rolling and unrolling is offset, I guess you could say. So it's not just a simple fact of when you come forward, you exhale, when you come up, you inhale. It's actually not true. You inhale, it's offset, right? I hope you're understanding that it's offset. What I mean is, so your inhale and your exhale um, happens at the midway points, um, initiates at the midway points to coming forward and coming back. So you're coming forward, your breath is still inhale phase, and now the second half is exhale. You come up, you're still exhaling, and then you start inhaling, right? So your breath is offset from your coming forward and back. It's not matching perfectly um, forward and back. Practice that a few times. Playing with the range. Using your arms, you can use your arms high if you want to, and then they land. Okay. Smoothing it out. Noticing that your breath is offset from your movement, but how that perfectly coordinates. Okay, let's fold that leg back in and sitting here. Okay, you can close your eyes if you'd like to. I recommend it. Wow, so here we are. Your sitting position is probably different than it was before. Ah, so we have just opened and worked with the life nerve channel, the brain through the spine, through the sciatic nerve roots, all the way through to the bottom of your feet. At the fascially, it comes all the way to your eyes and all the way to the bottom of your feet. Wow, what an amazing channel. What an important channel to have open because it's your earth to cosmic channel. When you practice this this way, like we've been doing, on a regular basis, maybe it's just weekly, maybe it's every day, but on a regular basis, I think at least weekly is really important, your body will start to understand its openness more often, right? It will become, it becomes more of a state of being, becomes part of your energetic powers, okay? And as far as flexibility goes, you will notice that your body opens up more easily. Uh, people that have been doing this weekly for a while now, their mobility is opening and I know their earth connection is opening. While we're sitting here, let's do a little bit of sitting breathing. And again, I recommend the cushion. And you might want a thicker cushion or a thinner cushion. So here we are. I want you to, hopefully you can see in the video, go ahead and hold your um, hand at the back on the sacrum and on your front, your low abdomen. So we're gonna do, it's very similar to cat-cow and life nerve stretch. We do a little rocking of the spine. So you're gonna rock your pelvis back a little bit, chest down, neck head. 
And then you rock forward a little bit. Chest up. Neck and head. Now, this is not, if you're familiar with something called um, uh, spinal flex in like Kundalini yoga and maybe other yogas, this is not this. Back, front, back, front. I see people doing that a lot um, in those other forms of yoga. And to me, it looks like um, there's a low ceiling in the room like that. Like imagine you had a low ceiling shunk, and you just have to go forward and back right under that ceiling. It's very um, grinding on the spine and it's not what we're doing here. We're doing, and I'm not saying everybody in those forms of yoga do that kind of movement, but I do see a lot. So what we're doing instead is we are going back and forward somewhat, but the focus is more on the down and the up. So when you rock your pelvis back, you go down a little. It's not a big range, down a little. When you rock forward your pelvis, you go up and then you go down and then you go up. Now all that spinal um, uh, tidal flow, that flow, that ripple that we did in, in uh, life nerve stretch, we do here. It's a little more subtle. So pelvis, spine, chest, neck, head goes down. Pelvis, body, chest, neck, head goes up. And so your spine is experiencing a tidal flow that your pelvis rocks back and then your head is last. But before your head comes down, your pelvis starts coming up. Before your head is all the way at the top, your pelvis rocks down and back. Just notice that, that your pelvis flexes, your head is still extending until it comes back because we're talking about a whip-like action. So this is not head and pelvis together, pelvis and head together. That is not this, right? It's a, get, it's, it's a whip. So again, do your whip arm <laughs> to remind yourself that this starts this finishes, this comes down, this stays up, yeah? So your tail goes under, your head is last, your tail starts, your head is last. Your breath is offset again. Okay, a few of these. Make it really small now. with this whip breath. Okay, and then just rest in the middle. When we're resting here in the middle, the whip action is still happening. It's just deep inside you. Yeah, can you feel how your pelvis is rocking on inhale? Okay, all right. After a few of those, you might feel a little awake. <laughs> Your eyes might open up a bit. And you might notice again, and yet another shift in your sitting alignment. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna go to standing. Okay, so here we are in standing. And the first warm up we're gonna do here is, um, it's, it's a similar uh, technique as a life nerve stretch, except this is working on a different nerve and fascial um, continuum. So now 
we are working through the nerves that come through your neck, your chest, out through your arm, forearm, and all the way into your hands. Okay, so this is this chain. This chain is the, the wing. So what we're doing now is we're opening the wing, right? And what we do is we just imagine you're a bird and you've tucked, you've nestled your head under your wing. So you're going to do that. You bend your knees and you can round your spine here. A little bit and you tuck under that wing all right then your your wing unfolds your body comes up you step away from that arm so this is my right arm so I'm stepping to the left the arm unfolds and the hand pulls back very importantly please it does not go back here okay it does not go back here why? Remember, we're opening the ch energetic channels. When you open up the energetic channels, you want to, um, well, first of all, you don't want to go to end range. And I'll talk more about this in, in, this, in this exercise. We've already talked about it a bit. So we're not going to end range. The second thing we're doing is so we're going shy of end range also we're opening up and we're we're like flossing or clearing out channels when you floss or clear out channels you don't try to create kinks and block flows okay sometimes we will block flow and that's in a very purposeful reason within a Kriya that's got an energetic signature. We will block flows because we want to um, create a banda, a bind, um, which basically creates a, an, uh, 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 an ischemic and a, uh, reaction. So we squeeze. And if you squeeze your hands together, they might turn a bit white because you've stopped the blood flow. But then when you release all this circulation, energy um, and blood is forced into the area. And so um, that can be very uh, specifically used within an energetic signature of a Kriya. However, because these are warm-ups and these are preparations, the goal is opening our channels. You might get bored with me saying that, but I want us to remember that. That's the goal. Because when the channels are open, it's like um, we have opened the directions in shamanism. We have opened up all the directions of communication and then what comes in for that moment and for that healing and for that specific situation can come from anywhere in many different combinations. Okay, where were we? Well, yes, so we did the tuck of the wing. Then we step away and the wing opens and specifically not behind you. That's where I was. The hand opens back. You turn your head away. Okay? And then you come back and you tuck in. You nuzzle under your wing. You bend and flex your spine and you curl under. Okay? And then you step away. Open the wing. Pull back the hand. Turn the head. And then come back in and tuck under. Let's do that again. Step away, pull back. The other arm just hangs nicely down. Coming in and good. Now, one, uh, two more things to, sh uh, actually that's enough I think. And then just shake the arm out. Now shake your feathers. Uh, you shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it really well. You can even shake that cheek on that side and that head. Mm, shake it, roll it. 
you can shake both a little bit, but stand here with your feet under you, right? So it's not out here. Your feet under you and your arm hanging down. You might notice that is a very big change from the other side because your body has opened the channel and because your body knows how to stand, you're not saying, I must pull my shoulder back, I must have a long arm, I must have my chest lifted. You're just letting your body be and it knows how to go as we've moved with our design here. Okay, now I want to say another thing here about infinity and <laughs> um, this movement. So. When we do our movements, uh, as you've probably noticed already, that we want to contact infinity and give our system the experience of infinity. If you go to end range where you've locked, right? And you go, oh, and you push into that, oh, that's an end range, that's a stopping point in your body, okay? And it says to your body, the end, stop, okay? It also creates some, some safety mechanisms that kick in in your body to protect you, so you get a protection. Arr! He, she, they're at the end, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, so, um, when you do this movement, and you'll see it in a lot of the movements, especially in the preparations, but also in the Kriyas, that you bend and then you decide, when you step away, you turn your head, you flex your arm back, you decide, ah, there I am, and then you return. In other words, we don't go to an end point. Think water, think fluid, it, think waves. The waves go out and then they don't stop. They decide to return, yeah? So it's like you, you, when you tuck in, you could keep tucking infinitely, but you decide to step to the side. You uncurl your wing. It could go and go and go, but you decide to come back in and tuck in. So this is part of the tidal flow as well, that you, there's an infinity that you touch and then you return and there's an infinity that you touch, okay? So touching infinity, it's got a very important energetic imprint in your body. You tuck and you could go forever, but you decide to return. You go and go and go, and you decide to tuck under. Let's do one more time. Touching infinity. Go and go, it could keep going, but you decide to return. Okay, shake it out. Wah. Shake your cheek a little bit. Shake your arm. Shake both. And then stand with your feet under you. Ah, notice the arms hanging. Notice the arms. Ah, so nice, isn't it? The chest is just relaxed and the arms are hanging. Okay. All right, so let's just shake our body a little bit. Shake the leg, shake the other leg, shake the arms, wiggle the tail, shake the chest. So shaking is really important. 
shaking is such a good thing, loosening up, you know, athletes do it, dancers do it, so many performers do it. It gets out the nerves, but shamans do it to shake out the um, energy. Anything that's been, you know, we got so many patterns in us, um, movement patterns, belief system patterns, and it's like you're getting really deep inside, inside the bones between places, and you're rustling up, you're shaking out anything that has been stored in there. It's really amazing to do. Dunk, dunk, dunk. All right, okay. So then walk your feet and find your feet underneath you and stand. Oh. You probably feel a lot of energy moving through your body right now. And that is um, because there's a lot of proprioceptive activity. So the nerves that sense where you are, the nerves that know where you are in space, the proprioceptive nerves, they're the presence nerves, they're on board because we just did that shaking, which applied movement, pressure, gravity uh, to the system, waking you up, okay? So this is um, what we've just done. So now we're going to look at the a yoga chair pose. And this is a modification on the typical way that chair pose is taught. And, and it has a lot of details in it and a lot of specifics. So the first thing I'd like you to do um, is, is rub right here where your, where your femur, where your leg goes into your pelvis. You've got these creases, yeah? Everybody's got them. It's the creases where your femur and your pelvis meet. Okay? All right. So your hip joints are basically uh, deeper in your body than the front of your front of your body in which we're touching, but the hip joints are quite medial. They're quite midline. They're not out here, and they're definitely not out here. So your hip joints, that's where your femur goes into your socket, is not midline, but to the outside of the midline, quite midline, okay? But also quite deep in your pelvis, okay? Now, I have found that doing the uh, chair pose in the way that we're going to do it helps to neurologically um, embody your hip joints pretty well and pretty directly. Remember, in preparation movements, we're trying to open the channels and we're trying to do the most efficient and effective preparations to help us for the kriyas that we're going to be doing or the practice that we're going to be doing. And this way that we do the chair pose helps to neurologically embody and align into the hip joints. This helps with all movements that we're going to be doing in sitting, in kneeling, in standing, in lunging, all the movements for the 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 larger practice in organizing how you are on your pelvis when you stand, when you move, when you squat, when you kneel, okay? And so let's, let's get into it a little bit more. So right here, your hip joints, deep inside, but if you want to touch the front, and I recommend that you do, that's how they are, okay? So when you're standing on your feet and you're standing like a human, not like, I don't know what that is, but when you're standing uh, in, ba in a balanced, balancing position, you want your feet under your hip joints. That's the most support for your chakras and for your spine, for your organs, 
everything. Best alignment for your hips, your knees, your feet, everybody. Shoulders, neck and head. Okay, so there we are, feet under the sockets. So let's move into this chair pose. For the chair pose, it's actually a deep squat. So because of that, we're gonna take the feet a little wider than the hip joints. We're gonna take the feet about to shoulder width because we're gonna be in a deep knee bend, okay? So touch your shoulders. Go ahead and touch them and bring them down like that. So it's about shoulder width, yeah, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect on shoulder width, but just about. Then you're gonna fold in half at the socket. So those deep hip creases, fold in half and bend your knees. I have your hands on your knees for a moment. Okay, so here we are, we're bent in half. Just tuck my shirt in a little bit so you can see. And my pelvis is not tucked under. So already some of you may have been trained or you might think you've got to tuck your tail under. Okay, go ahead and do it for a moment. You might feel a lot of tension coming into your back. Let's relax that, shake that out. So what we're gonna do instead is, instead of taking all the brunt of the exercise into your lumbar, which we don't wanna do that, we're gonna take the strength into our big muscles of our glutes and our quads. These are big, strong muscles. So we're gonna hinge at the hips. We're gonna bend the knees. Put your hands on your knees to help you a little bit right now. Weight on the heels, little wiggle toes. So your weight's on your heels. And then I always say, like, imagine your tail is like a big alligator crocodile tail, yeah? And just wag it a little bit, side to side. So that your pelvis, if anything, it's extended, right? And your, your sacrum and your tailbone are a little bit free here, back, okay? The glutes are these muscles. And if you take your hands on them, you can go up this way. That's the direction of them right now, okay? And the quads are, you can just feel your quads working. Okay, use your legs, use your legs. Hang your arms down and shake them. Oh, you can even shake your face out. Palms forward, they face forward, and then palms back. Do a little bounce, weight on your heels. Breathing in and out strongly through your nose. Bring your arms down, your palms face each other, and sit back further. Your palms still face each other. Open fingers and push into your heels. Stand up. Walk your feet closer together so they're more under your pelvis again. And let's just stretch up through one arm, up through the other arm. Shake out and stand. Okay. Stand here for a moment. Now, take your eyes up to eye level. So wherever you, your screen is, so if you're watching this video, bring your head up and your eyes up as if you're looking on the horizon. So you don't need to look at the video. Just hear my voice looking at the horizon and feel your alignment. Feel your true height. Often after this exercise, you feel like that you're upright, that your muscles are engaged but not tight, that you're here. This is your height. Feel it. Many of us are not standing in our true height. We're kind of uh, in some echo or shadow of ourselves. Okay. All right, so I wanna give a few more details here. It's hard to cue all of the cues while I'm doing it, while I'm teaching it, but as you're going, please continue to breathe in and out through your nose so that 
you you know you're using a lot of um, strength in this exercise, working with the quads and the, the glutes and the quads, and you're focusing. And there's a lot of things to focus on. So go ahead and breathe in and out through the nose quite strongly. Also, you might feel that your muscles are getting fatigued, but notice right now you're okay. So these are big muscles. They can do it. They can take it. Um, if you're feeling a little bit of muscle burn as you're doing this, it's really not a problem. It, it, you, it pretty much releases very soon afterwards. Okay. We'd have to do some like jumping squats or some pretty intense, uh, reps and going up big hills with squats and things like that to, um, get a burn in those big muscles that you feel the next day. With a few of these, um, you will not uh, likely do that. Okay, so we are doing a few things here. We are reorganizing the neurological imprint of where your hip joints are and how your pelvis rests on your legs. But this exercise is doing much more than that as well. It's um, also working on the length of that, um, the fascia, uh, of the back of the ankle and, um, uh, foot and ankle, the back of the, um, uh, hamstring to sacral fascia. We're also extending the spine. So we're working on opening the chest with that and lengthening the spine. So there's a lot of things happening in this type of version of the chair pose. When we get to that point where we're back there and our arms are out, really open your hands and especially imagine that each of your fingertips are open channels so that the line of energetics coming through your body is going far out there, out through your fingers, all the way out and far back here through your sit bones, through your tailbone. So you're becoming this really long line of energy. Okay. So let's try this again. Remember we have our creases. So let's remind ourselves of those. The femurs flex deep in the hip joints. They do not flex out here, <laughs> um, but they're flex deep in here. Okay. But for this exercise, when we start, uh, we, we start it with that, but then we move the legs to shoulder width because we're going to be in a deep flexion. It's just easier. We fold better, remember? And so you fold at those creases and you bend your knees. Your tail is not tucked and you can in fact kind of wag it like a big alligator or crocodile. Take your hands on your glutes and pull up this way to remind yourself that's the direction of those muscles and the quads are working. You're breathing right in and out through the nose. Weight on your heels. Wiggle your toes, hang your arms down. Sometimes I think like gorilla arms and gorilla face. Really take advantage of this beautiful position to hang your, hang your face, <laughs> hang your arms, palms face forward, palms, arms come back. Palms are facing the floor. You're breathing right in and out little bounce quads and glutes. Hamstrings are really getting long here. Tail is up, weight on the heels. Breathing. Arms come down. Long arms. Remember those long fingers. Sit back a little further. Stretch your arms. Breathing, bouncing. Open fingers. Here you go. Push in your heels. Walk your feet toward each other. Stretch up. Ah, oh, stretch again. Oh, nice hang out. I mean, uh, uh, shake out, shake the knees, walk your feet. So they're under your body. Remember that your feet are under your sockets. Your arms are hanging down and let your eyes come now up to eye level. Ah, eyes at eye level and just feel, you know what? Your body knows how to stand. Your body knows how to be here. Hmm. This is your true height. 
How is it? Yeah. Breathing in and out. Okay. Great. Let's come all the way down to sitting again. And you can grab your cushion if you'd like. Well, I recommend it, as you know, to use a cushion, unless you really don't need one. And then sit here. Just sit here for a moment. Mm, you can close your eyes, resting your arms. I'd like you to imagine you're free, you're open. We've connected to the tidal flows, the spine, the arms. Let your breath move. Okay. All right. So that is the breakdown of a collection of the preparatory move in, movements from the white shell yoga. And like I said, they can be done as a preparation for other practices, other yogas, other movement practices, meditation itself. You might feel very clear right now. You might feel like you're ready, <laughs> you're ready for something. That your, your sensitivities are open. You might feel like tingling all over your body. That your spine is activated. And your arms and legs are activated. Your feet, and your hands. These bodies are, these bodies are energetic, light bodies. These are bodies of light. When I say that to you right now, you probably say, yeah, they are. These bodies are for uh, multidimensional awareness. Feel the strength that's here right now. Feel the alignment that's here. It's like a um, big blank canvas, the most beautiful canvas, and all the paints too. Right here. It's awake, it's alive, it's life force itself. If you were to play an instrument or listen to healing music, if you were to dance or sing, if you were to paint or if you were to write, 
journey, if you were to meet with others, the sacred circle, or meet with the trees, this is a place, this is a place where you can do that from here. And all we've done is come back to us. That's all we've done. We've done a little bit of brushing, like brushing the teeth or brushing your hair. A little bit of washing, like washing your body. We've done a little bit of clearing of the windows. Everything's possible from here. Everything. Why you, here, why you are here on this earth is possible from here. Okay. Thank you and have a beautiful rest of your day or evening. Enjoy yourself. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so happy that what you are is flowing through you. Keep it going, keep it going. Okay, I'll see you next time.